Hello and welcome to this section of the Calculus 1 Derivative Help Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to talk about what we call related rates. Uh, it's a fancy sounding name and what it really means is word problems in Calculus 1 or word problems with derivatives really is what it is. And I'm not going to lie to you, most students find related rates one of the toughest uh, topics in, in all of Calculus 1, definitely related to derivatives. Uh, because what you have here is a bunch of word problems. Every one of these things is going to be a word problem. So you'll have to read it, you'll have to be able to draw a picture or set up some kind of diagram or something so you know what we're talking about. You have to identify what we know and what we're trying to solve for, and then you'll have to write an equation on your own. It's not going to be given to you. You'll have to write your own equation that describes the situation and then use all of the techniques of calculus that you've learned to this point to solve the problem. So there's four or five different links in that chain that if you don't, under, if you don't get one of those links correct or if, you, if you're not comfortable with one of them, then you're going to bomb this section. If you don't know how to read a problem correctly and set up a diagram, you'll bomb this section. If you don't know how to write an equation, that describes it, you'll definitely bomb it. If you don't know how to take derivatives and what, you know, what all that stuff means and solve equations, you're going to bomb it. So there's really a lot of things here. Uh, but I want to give you a little bit of pep talk, pep, a little bit of a pep talk before we get started uh, in that a lot of students will read these, you'll watch these things and you'll say, well, okay, I kind of get that, but I never would have figured that out on my own. A lot of students will say that when they watch these problems. They'll say, well, I kind of follow that, but I never would have figured that on my own, and they'll feel hopeless. You need to make a conscious effort not to beat yourself up if you don't understand and you don't see the path to the end of the problem ahead of time. Heck, when I work these problems the first time, I don't see the end of the problem. I don't see start to finish how I'm going to get there. I just start writing things down that make sense and then I can eventually see how I can solve it. It's like you don't do a puzzle, a jigsaw puzzle, all at one sitting. I mean, you, you place the pieces of the border and then you piece things together and you finally get to the end. Same with this. You write down what you know and you make your way to the end. You don't see the entire solution in your head. You just can't do it. Um, the other thing is, uh, you know, once upon a time in third grade when you were learning uh, regular word problems like, uh, you know, Jenny goes to the store and has five dollars and somebody gives her five more dollars, how many dollars does Jenny have? Well, you know that that's five plus five is ten dollars, but once upon a time you didn't know that. It wasn't so clear that when someone gives you more money, the word more tells you that you're going to need to add those together because you, you were just learning how to interpret those words. All right? How did you figure it out? How did you get good at that? It's through practice. You worked a ton of those problems and eventually you figured out that when somebody gives you more money, then that means you're going to add them together. Um, you know, how many more socks do I have than John? When I say how many more do I have, it means I'm going to subtract those things generally, right? That all comes through practice. So when you look at these related rate problems, the first few of them, you might look at, you might say, boy, I get it, but I don't, I don't think I ever would have figured that out on my own. But you need to realize that the process to get good at these comes from doing them. It comes from seeing these problems. So if you see 10 of these problems, uh, and then you work your 11th problem, you're going to get the hang of how to set it up just by the fact that you've done it before. You're going to get the hang of how to set them up because you've seen how it was done before. So if you don't see the first, if you kind of get it but you don't quite feel like you would have done it yourself, don't worry about that. Just get good at these problems that I'm going to present to you. And when you get on your test, you'll have a very good starting, starting uh, methodology for you to get to the end. Okay, so let's begin. The first problem says, uh, the radius of a spherical balloon shrinks at one half meter per minute. 